Hi there, so welcome to my office. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a desktop experiment uh, to show you one of the important things uh, that chirality brings to us in molecules. It's actually a physical observation which is really fascinating because um, molecules that are enantiomers or chiral um, are really identical in every way to uh, each other, no matter what we throw at it, except for one thing. One thing is different about them. And to kind of show you what that thing is, I'm going to do a little short experiment and I'm going to use these uh, things here. Now, what are these? These are Polaroid uh, filters. And what a Polaroid filter does is that it uh, allows light to go shine through it, but only in one direction. Uh, so the way I'm holding up over here, this little stripe that you're seeing, um, it tells me that the light is only going in this direction, which is currently horizontal. And both of these are the same. So if we look at them, you can see me through it over there. And if I put them together, it gets a little bit darker, uh, but you can still see me. But if I turn them and I get to 90 degrees, I completely shut out the light. And, and that is because what's happening is the light is only being allowed in horizontally through the one uh, filter, and the other filter is only allowing light to go in, in this direction. And there is no light going in this direction, so it stops. So let's go and see how we can use these uh, to do a very interesting experiment and, and watch this fascinating uh, uh, property of chiral molecules. So what I have here is just a solution of ordinary water in a test tube, which is placed above my camera with its uh, uh, light on, and then I've got this Polaroid filter um, facing at the bottom over there. And so I've got my other filter. If I place it at the same direction, of course the light comes through, as we saw earlier. Um, but if I now take this filter and I rotate it by 90 degrees, notice that the light gets completely extinguished. And this is the property that we're going to be looking at. Uh, because the light from the one filter is coming through in one direction, uh, and this one is now only allowing light in this direction, they're being blocked and we can't see uh, anything else. Okay, so uh, if we now switch out uh, this water and we use sucrose, which is a solution of table sugar, uh, this is a naturally occurring molecule, uh, which we know has nine chiral centers in it. It is optically active. And what does this mean? So if I put my filter on and I put it in at 90 degrees. If it was water, it would have extinguished things, but it doesn't. Uh, we actually see light coming through. Uh, in fact, if we start rotating slightly to the left, we will see that the light gets a little brighter. But if we rotate to the right, it eventually extinguishes at about this point there. Now that's actually what we'd expect. Um, we know from measurements that sugar rotates light to the right. Um, and this is a fascinating property of chiral molecules, is the ability to rotate plain polarized light in one of two directions, to the right or to the left. Okay, so that's a really impressive uh, feature. What, what I'm going to do now is I want to look at what is actually quite a classic example. I want to look at two naturally occurring uh, enantiomers, and that is of the molecule known as carvone. It comes in these two forms, R and S, and they are slightly different. R carvone is actually the smell of uh, spearmint, um, your minty toothpaste kind of smell. Uh, and the S carvone is what is often described as being the smell of caraway seeds. Now, to be honest, I actually don't know what caraway seeds smell like. I don't think I've even eaten caraway seeds. Um, when I smell uh, the uh, S carvone, uh, to me it kind of smells a little bit more spicier. There's a bit of a mintiness to it, but it's not certainly as strong as um, spearmint. But it has a little bit more of like a earthy spiciness to it. So they are different. Um, our bodies somehow detect that these two molecules, which are totally different, are um, do smell uh, different as well. And um, I wanted to show you an important feature of these two enantiomers in this uh, experiment. So let's go and have a look at it now. So this is my R and S carvone in test tubes. And we're now going to just pop the R carvone into uh, the clamp. Uh, these are pure 
compounds of kava and they're not a solution in anything else. Um, I'm not going to just take my Polaroid filter and pop it on top of the test tube and at 90 degrees light is still passing through so the solution is bending light in some way. If we start moving it towards the left we see that it fully extinguishes at this point over there. Now this is quite important. Um, our carvone is moving the light in an anti-clockwise direction and we typically talk about this being the minus enantiomer because it moved the light in this anti-clockwise direction. It's important to note that this minus that we're measuring here has nothing to do with the fact that this is our carvone which we assign using the CIP rules. The minus is something that can only be determined experimentally. So now we can take our filter off and we can put in the other enantiomer which is s carvone So we just pop it in here and let's see what happens with the Polaroid filter when we put it on. So uh, as, is, as before light does go through and if we move it slightly to the left the light gets a little bit brighter but if we move it to the right we get to a point where it is extinguished. So in this case the S enantiomer has moved the light slightly to the right. It's moved it in a clockwise direction and this will get the symbol plus because the light moved in a clockwise which we often associate as being a positive direction. What is interesting though is if I show you and remind you what the other enantiomer, the minus enantiomer or the R enantiomer looked like through this pop-up over here, you can see that the way that they have rotated has been equal but opposite. And this is an incredibly important feature of enantiomers. It is the one thing that we know about enantiomers is that they will rotate plane polarized light in equal and opposite fashions. So that's pretty cool. Um, enantiomers have this property. It's the only physical property that we can uh, use with kind of some kind of spectroscopy, some light that tells us um, that these things are different. Uh, enantiomers rotate plane polarized light, but the most important thing is that when they rotate that plane polarized light, they do it in an equal and opposite direction. Um, and that is a really fascinating uh, property that was originally actually discovered by Louis Pasteur, who was the guy that was pretty famous for pasteurization. Um, there's one more interesting thing that we need to, to look at. And, and if I tell you about it, I think it'll kind of make a lot of sense. So I'll kind of put the question out to you. What do you think will happen if we take half of the R enantiomer and half of the S enantiomer and we mix them together to make a 50-50 mixture. So let's just have a look at the experiment. I think you can kind of guess maybe what will happen, but let's go and check it out. So here I have a 50-50 mixture of R and S carvone, and we're just gonna stick it into the clamp. And when I bring my Polaroid filter up to it, let's see what happens. We bring it in and look here, it essentially 90 degrees we're seeing complete extinction of the light which is exactly what happened when we had water okay it's not exactly perfect if we move it a little bit to the left and that's probably just due to me not mixing it perfectly um, but essentially this is what we have um, when we got a 50 50 mixture of r and s carvone or any enantiomer they essentially cancel each other out okay so that is what we call a racemic mixture uh, and a racemic mixture or, ma uh, or racemate is what we call a 50 50 mixture of two enantiomers and and the net effect is that it doesn't rotate light so because we have 50 percent of the one that wants to rotate to the left and 50 percent of the other one that wants to rotate to the right they cancel each other out and so the molecule might or the solution might not look like it's optically active it may not look like it's chiral but actually it does contain chiral molecules um, anyway so it's just a term that we need to to learn so 
Uh, that's it. Um, I hope this was interesting and really kind of highlighted this very, very important principle uh, of chiral molecules. It's one of the ways that we are just able to uh, look at any molecule and just determine whether uh, or not it's chiral. Uh, the experimental methods, the other methods that, uh, uh, that we can use are, are fairly limited. There is, if we can go crystal structure, we can do that. Um, though it is, uh, we need kind of very specialized equipment uh, to be able to do that. But otherwise, all the other spectroscopic methods that we throw at two enantiomers, uh, they will look the same. Uh, and as you go through chemistry and you learn about these, these techniques, you'll see that for enantiomers, we cannot tell the difference uh, looking through that. Any molecule that is chiral of some form will have this ability to rotate plain polarized light. I should mention though, it's important that diastereomers are different and that's one of the things that we learned. Diastereomers are not mirror images of each other. They, they are chiral molecules but they are not the same and so we can have two diastereomers and both of them might rotate light to, in the same direction but with different values. Uh, so diastereomers are different. They will rotate light, but you can't look at two diastereomers and say, ooh, okay, the one is going to rotate it left and the other one's going to rotate it light. No, there's only enantiomers that do it that way. Okay, good. I hope you enjoyed this.